in Gilbert's <coughs> mind. Um, the purpose of, of, of this little session was for me to chair uh, a discussion around uh, joined up thinking between <coughs> central government, local government and, and communities. I think the more pertinent uh, question may be to promote joined up thinking within government, um, never mind between the different tiers, but um, that said I think, the, um, I think what we really need to think about is the art of the possible. Um, and while um, obviously you've had some of the, the, you know, the academic uh, perspective in terms of how complex some of these issues are, I think on, on another level they're actually not as complex as some people might think. Um, I think it's about understanding what we can do if we uh, are all pulling in the same direction, which is kind of a, the, what we're talking about in terms of some of that um, joined up thinking. I think that there is the space, the political space, um, in national government and certainly at, at local government level to get a lot of things done if um, we can all sort of uh, tap into a vision that we can, we can take forward together. So. It's just to set that context. I'm going to quickly run through, because some of you um, will be fed up to the high teeth of listening to me, because you've heard all this before, but some of you may not know what Green Conwell is doing. Mm -hmm. I'll very quickly go through some of the things that the, the Council is undertaking with a range of partners, and then we'll sort of open it up to a, a bit more of an interactive session. As Alex has already said um, uh, about himself, and I'll certainly say that about myself, I'm not an expert on everything, um, and it may well be that someone on the floor um, we'll, we'll have a better idea about certain issues, but we can, we can work through that, um, I'm, I'm sure. So, the background. What, why do we have a, a, a Green Cornwall programme, and um, perhaps more pertinently, why are we all um, here today? Cornwall's doing quite well um, on, the, on the low carbon agenda. Um, we've certainly been very good at selling ourselves over the years, and actually I think we are starting to um, create a bit of a critical mass in terms of how we're viewed, certainly at the national level um, and indeed at the European level, whether that's on um, our levels of uh, renewable energy uh, installed capacity, whether it's on some of the innovative uh, ideas we've got around um, smart grid uh, technology, um, we're, we're well thought of. Sometimes we're perhaps, um, I think the perception is stronger than um, the reality on the ground, but there are a lot of good things that are, that are going on. The role that, that I have is to try and, as much as I can, um, is to try and coordinate some of that activity, both in terms of what the council is doing uh, uh, to sort out its own carbon footprint, but also in terms of how the, the, the council engages more widely with, um, with partners. And I think we're having um, some success um, on, on that front. One of the key things that we've always been very keen to emphasise from the council's perspective is that um, it's not just about environmental drivers, if we want this thing to, this, this movement, this community energy, the whole low carbon thing to, to really take off, you have to look at the, the economic and social drivers as well and what the benefits can be to people across the board. I very rarely in any forum, I'm fairly safe today I would like to think, but usually I don't talk about climate change at all when I'm talking about Green Cornwall. We talk about jobs and the social benefits and we, we capture the environmental ones through what we're doing. Um, I don't think they're, they're mutually exclusive at all, and I think a lot of people are beginning to, to understand that um, a, a lot better now. Um, we've, we, have, we have a very Cornwall-wide focus, although the council element is important, it's about what can Cornwall do, how does it fit in with national and European frameworks. It's not just about the council, because the council can only make a, a, a tiny splash in a, in a, in a, in a very big um, ocean, so it is about where does the council fit within that wider picture. And Green Cornwall is not about biodiversity. There's lots of people that are out there um, fighting the cause on biodiversity, as is around uh, the low carbon uh, angle. We work closely with people like the, the, the LNP, the Local Nature Partnership. What are we working towards? It sounds fairly simplistic. More renewable energy, uh, reducing how much energy we use, reducing greenhouse gases, economic and community benefit. Uh, that's about as far as my simplistic brain will go. Um, but actually it's not a bad framework um, that we work towards. All of those are wrapped up in national and European targets. If a project wants to come into that programme, it has to evidence how it's going to contribute towards um, uh, those targets that, that we're talking about there. Renewables is, um, is one that um, we're always very careful of because just looking at numbers going up in terms of installed capacity 
um, can be something of a red herring sometimes. What we all need to start <coughs> thinking about is the ownership models uh, and where the benefits of that, those renewables are going, but we'll talk about that um, a little bit later. It's a programme, it's got lots of projects that feed into it. Uh, as I've already mentioned, it has internal and external um, emphasis. I think it's a clear strategy, others probably don't, but it's, um, it's fairly um, clear in terms of our, our, our direction of travel. And I sit in the, the Economic Development um, um, Service at Cornwall Council. These are essentially um, the work strands that we work towards. The council has to uh, match its own um, targets around reducing its carbon footprint. Um, these are some of the projects that we're working towards that have more of a community outward looking focus. And then the final strand, which is the green economy, is about looking at the commercialisation of opportunities from the, the, renewable, um, uh, the renewable agenda. A lot of the green communities talk <coughs> more about reprofiling existing technologies and how we can start to reprofile the, the, the energy economy. And there's also a very strong emphasis on energy efficiency as well, which must never be forgotten in um, any of these uh, discussions. Achievements, a lot of them are quite small scale. Uh, I, I always think of the Green Cornwall programme to a certain extent as um, sort of piloting stuff that needs to be mainstreamed, but it's about getting the principle right and getting the, um, the, the political buy-in to what it is we're trying to do and then try and push it out more, more widely. We're working with, um, with British Gas, the first one there, on, a, on an, an energy company obligation roll-up, um, which has got £100 million allocated towards it, which is essentially an energy efficiency scheme. Um, and that's called Glow Cornwall now, and it's it's based in uh, the Cornwall Innovation Centre. Obviously, a big drive on the on, on the energy efficiency side, and we're looking at around 20,000 homes, give or take. Although whether we hit that is um, is, is anyone's guess. Um, we're working with the Low Carbon Society on a revolving loan fund, which is aimed exclusively at community-run renewable energy projects. Um, it's only 1.3 million, so it's. It's very small scale in the great scheme of things, but again, it's about embedding the principle uh, that the council can get involved with those types of schemes. The money comes back into the council, and the community, once that loan is paid off, with that money can then keep going back into the local community. It's that it's that resonance and it's that link with renewable energy that I think is really important, which hopefully we'll talk about more later. We're a successful electric vehicle infrastructure bid, which covers Cornwall, Devon, and, and Dorset rapid rapid uh, infrastructure bid which can charge a car from flat in 15 minutes. It's important in terms of the decarbonisation of transport and how we want to take that forward. It's only one part, but it's an important part. We worked with um, EDOM, uh, Community Energy Plus, Energy Share, uh, and the NHS on Cornwall Together, the collective switching uh, project as well, which saved around £300,000 for Cornish householders. And there's a whole range of other projects that we're working on, which I won't go into. Um, but suffice to say that they're all working towards that program that I was talking about and they all have resonance I think with, um, with people who are in the, in the room today. So what are our future plans? Well hopefully uh, all of you are aware that uh, Cornwall is going to receive another large tranche of European funding, 592 million euros. And I lead on significant strands of that and the concept of local energy market um, and community energy is now built into the draft strategy for that. So uh, in terms of how important it's going to be moving forward, not just from the council's perspective, but from a European funding perspective, it's there. How it actually uh, manifests itself, I think, is something that uh, people in this room can hopefully start um, working towards. But it's crucial. Low carbon is a big, big strand um, of, of that post-2013 um, operational programme. We're also working on uh, the concept of a local energy market, but you'll hear more about that um, from some of the uh, other speakers. But um, I think that the, the local driver for developing energy markets is far more important than what central government may or may not say that we should be doing. Um, it's more about um, central government um, just giving us the, the space to get on with it to a certain extent, because I think some of the solutions are there already, and we don't need Whitehall to tell us how to get on with it. It's essentially local supply, locally owned local supply, uh, matching local demand, um, and how you can uh, create a, a local energy market out of that. Um, there's lots of commercialisation opportunities. Marine, we're very well positioned in terms of the uh, waiver, but that's not the only um, player in town. Um, we have 60% of the UK's geothermal resource as well, which has potential for developing uh, heat networks. 
and we have Smart Cornwall Private, which some of you are involved with as well, which has um, potential for um, creating some smart um, solutions around reducing energy in households and also looking at some of the grid constraints that we're currently having in, in pockets of uh, Cornwall as well. Suffice to say, it's going to be a challenging environment for the council in terms of what we can do over the coming uh, months and years. Uh, we're probably looking at sort of circa 30% cuts or something along those lines in the next couple of years. Um, but it's not just about the council. Uh, as I've as said before, I think the council is just one of those players in, in a governance structure um, that needs to coalesce around a, a shared vision. And, and I think that um, you know, while we, we will do what we can in terms of trying to um, give some uh, leadership um, to, to, to creating this community energy uh, movement, I think it is about how we, we collectively work together um, to try and make the most of what I think are the huge opportunities that this uh, agenda um, has. So that's in a nutshell. Um, apologies if it was a bit of a canter through, but it's just to give, try and give you a feel for some of the things that, um, that we're doing at, uh, at, at the council. Uh, I'm a one-man team, so um, there's, uh, you know, I haven't got a huge amount of support, but it's not about, it's not about what the council can do. I, I, you know, I firmly believe that it is about um, what we can collectively do. Almost all of the, you know, the best ideas that you know, I've been talking about just haven't come from the council, that might surprise you, um, because uh, it's not exclusive to the energy uh, debate, but, um, it's, but at least we're open, you know, we're open enough to admit that you know, and we want those good ideas to keep coming at us. And it is about um, you know, how, can we, how can we collectively do this uh, and get things off the ground, because there are huge opportunities um, in this agenda, whether it is renewable energy or energy efficiency and community resilience, when services are going to start being drawn back, um, how energy might now to actually become a positive influence rather than a negative one that the recent price rises of, um, you know, that we've all heard about have, have been out there, putting out there in the population. So that's it for me. Um, <coughs> let's take questions. I'll probably deflect half of them to people in the room, but um, yeah, so hopefully that gives you some idea of what we're doing. Thank you.